Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are one more time, and this is the third in a series of seven videos on that conspicuous drop in the afternoon. So many people fail treatment because it's like he's having a reaction to the medication, but I have no idea what to do about it. Well, these seven videos are designed to help you think about what to do about it because it's my opinion that we can learn from the experience of watching that afternoon drop and really thinking about it more systematically as opposed to he's having a side effect that doesn't work. I think side effects can be instructive, and I'm going to show you how. And this is the big uh, turn in the road right here because we're moving away a little bit from dopamine to serotonin. Remember the first one was, hey, we can learn about this. That was an overview video. We can learn about this if we just pay attention to it. And yes, let's convert it to a learning uh, process. The second video was really kind of, as they say on the street, a, a no-brainer. Anybody could get the fact that a child or adult is no longer paying attention. Now, some of the newer medications with extended release, it's harder to see. But if you're very clear about what the criteria are, which I talked very carefully about in the last video, if you are very careful about those criteria that we talk about over here, then you can understand when the person's falling out, okay? So then the next level is the PM drop, the afternoon drop when the person feels sad. Yes, we're switching from cognition and thinking to affect, something a person can experience more somatically, emotionally. What is sad? Well, this is when an individual in the afternoon feels exceedingly vulnerable. Now, they don't have to be, as they say, pre-morbidly depressed. They don't have to have a pre-existing depression. They can, however, upon careful questioning, and often do, have a vulnerability that is exaggerated by the dopamine pulling up and taking care of the attention deficit disorder and the cognitive area. But as we said in this video right here, this video right here is where we see the issue of the dopamine shifting down the serotonin and creating a relative drop in serotonin with an affective emotional change. Now, a person says, well, I don't want to take two medications. I'm already taking one. I don't want to take two. Well, you've heard about bifocal glasses, right? Well, if you, it, you can't treat, unfortunately, none of us. It doesn't matter if it's the chairman of the department of an Ivy League medical school and child psychiatry. They cannot treat a serotonin problem with a dopamine product. It's like if you had heart disease and you came in to see me and I said, look, I know you got heart disease, but I'm going to treat you with insulin. Let's try some insulin on your heart disease. Yeah, I mean, you'd fire me in a minute. It's ridiculous. All right, so it's the same thing with dopamine and serotonin. You can't treat serotonin with dopamine. In fact, as I've said repeatedly before, dopamine exaggerates pre-existing serotonin problems even if you didn't recognize that that's what it was before you started. So what we're going to do, in, and what happens with that, who cares? That person needs an augmentation strategy very frequently with a very low dose selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor in the morning. Now, the nice thing about selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are SNRI, uh, like effects or Pristique, that sort of thing. The SNRIs and the SSRIs are 24-hour half-life, so they don't have the drop in the afternoon. So if you give them two medications in the morning, the SSRI covers the drop in the afternoon because why? It treats the comorbid, the coexisting serotonin problem that was actually brought out and aggravated by giving the dopamine medication in the first place. Now, if the other thing happens, and some of you may ask about this, drop a comment down below, if you will. We're happy to hear from you. And make sure you subscribe. We'll talk about that in a second. But the bottom line is, if the person needs a, a second medication, then the question is, what happens? Well, we've talked about drug interactions exceedingly over here. Take a look at the drug interaction video. And then the next thing is, a serotonergic agent can very frequently be given very low, low dose. Final point, if they get well with the stimulant medication and they no longer have those low sensitive uh, self-esteem issues that were secondary to the deterioration of self-mastery based on the executive function deterioration, so they're not feeling so bad about themselves, then they didn't have a comorbid depression or a comorbid serotonin imbalance in the first place. 
I don't like to even call it depression because we just call it a serotonin imbalance. And what happens is then the person will feel better just with the dopamine alone. I took a little longer with this video. The reason is, is because we're switching horses a little bit here and we have to keep on the track by really thinking about two things at one time. Thanks for paying attention. I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video. Number four, it's going to be the drop in the afternoon is going to be mad. Not sad, mad. You've seen it before. Tune in. Talk to you soon.